My name is Mariana Ferron, and I'm the owner of Tico Coffee Roasters. We are a coffee roasting company in Campbell, in California. We started our business about uh, three years ago, and we have been roasting so far a Costa Rican coffee. So I wanted to represent here in the U.S. my origins and share with, with people in the South Bay of California uh, more of what we have, the variety of uh, coffees that we have and processes that we have. Uh, that you normally don't find with some of the coffee roasting businesses that are currently there. And what I want to talk about is the relationships we have with the producers in Costa Rica and how that relationship is impacting the final cup that we serve to our customers. So we are two persons in our company, myself and my husband who is the roaster of the company. We bring two different uh, skill sets to, to our business. In my case, I started agribusiness and I worked a lot with coffee producers in the past in my country. And he has been an engineer for t 20 plus years. So his craftsmanship in, in the roasting process is really, has really improved what we do with the coffees that we have. So what is a direct trade relationship? This is the definition that we came up with what we have been doing so far. And it's when you know the farmer that you're buying from. And knowing the farmer is not just the name. You know where they live. You have been in their place. You have visited their farm. You know about their history. You know their children. So you know you have a relationship with them. It's not just a name. It's not just an, a farm or a coffee. Um, is when you buy directly from them. So you go and negotiate with them the lot that you want to buy or several lots in a farm. You can negotiate the price that is going to be beneficial for the producer and for you as a roaster. Um, you can also, through that relationship, work a lot of benefits for the producer. And for the roaster, it's important because you can ask for feedback you can also ask for a different process. If, for example, if you have been uh, buying washed coffees and you want to try that same lot in a honey process or in a natural process, you can talk with that producer and ask for that. And they will be willing to do it for you because they know you will be willing to buy from them again the next year. So what is the impact of that relationship with the consumer? Um, the most important thing for us in our business is to deliver to our customer the best cup of coffee possible. And you get that if you can pick the best coffees. Roast them in the right way and deliver that cup to your customer. And you get those, the best harvest if you can you know, talk with the, with the farmer and negotiate that. The customers here in California, where we are located, they feel connected, much more connected with the farmer than ever before. Because you are able to bring the pictures and the stories of the producers, even invite the producers to your roasting facility, or if you have a coffee shop, you can invite them to, and invite everybody to a presentation, have a talk with them, and ask you know, anything they want to know about that farm, about that producer. Uh, they have a better understanding of the conditions in the farm. So, you know, here in the United States, many persons don't know how a coffee plant looks. So you are that channel through the end consumer. You are able to present that information to them. You are able to share what are the practices in the farm, how the coffee is picked, how the coffee is processed, roasted, and then, you know, how the, the cup is served. So they have a better understanding of the whole chain. And they know also that they are contributing to a family, and not just a family, but a whole community in that country. And, and that is important for us as a business, but it's important for them too. Also, they are willing to, to pay a little bit higher prices for that coffee if they know that you as a producer or they as a producer are receiving better payment. What is the impact of that relationship in our business? First of all, is the ability to select micro lots that normally you won't get. If you talk with an importer, 
they have certain availability here in the United States, but this is what you, cho what you have to choose. If you go into with the producers, you can pick and choose. You can try everything and you say, I like this one, I want to buy from you. Um, you develop these long-term relationships, as I mentioned before, that bring mutual benefit. So you can develop a financing program for that producer. You can commit to buy for several years and help them improve their practices in the farm. And, and for us, as you know, getting that harvest uh, that we want to serve to our customers. There is a better um, customer retention based. In our personal case, we have been sharing a lot of our experience in our uh, interviews we have done in the farms in Costa Rica with our customers in California. And we see how important that is for them. They come back again and again and again, buying that specific coffee that they liked it, but also because they feel connected to that specific farm, for that specific name. They put a face to that coffee and that is important for them. So they come back to buy again and again. So that's important as from the business perspective. And as I mentioned, you know, since they come back and it is important for them, the sustainability, the support in the families and the communities, they're willing to pay better prices to support those farmers. What is the impact in the cup of coffee? Um, the best beans uh, give you a unique taste that you can develop with a natural coffee that you wouldn't necessarily have with a honey coffee or a washed coffee. So you are able to pick and develop that flavor or profile with your roasting processes. Um, that influence in the production affects the, the cup in a positive way and improve the quality over time to, to ensure the consistency in that cup. That that's what the, at the end you want to know or you want to have. So the customers always get the same quality of product over time. And I'm going to now introduce my partner, Thomas, and he's going to talk at the other points of the presentation and what is the impact of these relationships in the producer and the farms. Thank you. So um, let me talk a little bit about what does direct trade really mean for the producers. And direct trade for the producers has actually a, a very important impact on the individual producers because what happens first of all is that these producers will typically achieve higher prices for the coffees they're producing. So they are able to actually get better prices than they would ever be able to get on the far, fair market, on the open market. And it allows them to actually sustain their farming business in a much better way than it would be with the price volatility that we have in the open market. Um, what are they doing typically with this uh, higher prices that they're getting? They're reinvesting that back into their farm. So what this allows them to do is actually purchase new equipment, purchase additional elements in their farm, replant the farm in ways that they typically would not be able to do if they would uh, just open market sell their products. We have a very good example, one of the farmers that we're working with, he has been in the past um, shipping his coffee to um, a different micro mill for processing, but because of this direct trade relationships, what this helped him to do is actually save some money and now invest this in his own micro mill. What he can do now is he can actually process the coffee himself the way he wants it and the way the people he's working with, so the direct trade relationship partners that he has, process it very specific to their needs that gives him a unique differentiation and gives him a way to actually make his product even more attractive into the market to other uh, roasters as well as end buyers. Um, also one other very important fact for the producers is they will get direct feedback from the end customers through the roaster who is going to visit them in the region, um, giving them the way of better deciding how to improve the quality which in a non-direct trade relationship is pretty much impossible because as a producer you never get any feedback what's happening outside once you ship the coffee. 
Another impact of the direct trade is that typically, as a producer, you have the assurance of future product purchases because you are establishing a relationship and you know that your roaster is going to come back year over year because he's working with you throughout the year, which gives you almost like a guarantee that your product will be uh, in a longer term way of being placed in the market and being consumed by the roasters you're working with. And as a producer, you also have some connectivity to the end customers because through the roaster who's going to come to visit you once, twice, three times a year, that feedback that you're getting directly from the end customers that the roaster has been hearing is making a big difference because you know how your product is used, how people like your product, and you know how to better fine tune your product. And then last but not least is through this direct relationship, you have really a handshake between the producer and the roaster, which allows you not only to negotiate the terms, the expectations, but you also know how to tune your product. If you don't know who is the end consumer of your product, it's very difficult to make adjustments to your product. Because how do you know, how do you need to change the process of uh, washing the coffee or drying the coffee if you don't get this direct feedback from the end users, how they are liking your product. And if you work with just an outside organization or just with a distributor, it's very, very difficult to get that feedback. So you're producing something that maybe nobody in the market wants. Yeah. Now I think the big question now is, you have heard um, the impact on the cup, you have heard the impact on the customer, you have heard the impact on the consumer. Now how do you start this direct trade relationship? Because that's what I'm hearing from a lot of people who said, like, well, you guys are doing direct trade, but how did you start? How did you make this happen? Well, I think the first thing is what you need to do is you actually need to look at what is your favorite countries, your favorite producing regions that you really want to basically get a direct relationship with. You can't have a direct relationship with everybody in the world. So you need to basically pick those places where you really like the coffee, where you really feel connected to, and just choose from all these coffees that you're typically buying what is the places that you really favor. Now once you have that, you actually want to establish what, what in the English language we call a, a beachhead. So basically a first step into that country, a first step into that region, first step into that direct relationship. And the best way to do this is to really do an origin trip. And there's a lot of opportunities to do this. You, the Roasters Guild organization is doing every year an origin trip. The Baristas Guild is doing something like this. Or just work with your importer. They're setting up an origin trip for you where you can actually go into that region and get to know the country, get to know the farmers, and just visit a bunch of them. Now, also when we talk about direct relationship, you can't be all the time, 365 days a year, at the farms and work with the farmers. So because you have to go back and run your business at home. But what you need is you need someone in that local country that you can trust that you can actually have an additional relationship who is representing you in the country at the time you're not there. So the best is to actually find someone like an exporter or a consultant in that origin country where you build this relationship. With that relationship, what you do is you have that person represent you throughout the year, the times when you're not there. Now, what you then want to do is once you have all this set up, and it can be a process of up to a year that it will take you to get to that point, what you then want to do is you want to take a trip with your exporter, with the consultant that you have there, and visit a couple of farms that you want to work with, that you have um, discovered during your first origin trips. And maybe beach, reach out a little bit, go and visit some other farms that are close by. Because typically in those countries you have not just one farm, you have a couple of farms um, that are going to be there that allow you to really be uh, able to work with. Now, after your first visit, come back and do a second visit. Come back and see these farmers again because it's not a one-time visit and you're done. You have a direct trade relationship. You need to come back over and over again. And what you want to do is actually work throughout the entire year. So stay in contact with these farmers. Stay in contact through your consultant with these farmers if you can't reach them by phone, if you can't reach them by Skype. But there's so many opportunities you can actually reach out to them and talk to them throughout the year. And then one thing what we strongly recommend, what we are doing, is we're actually not just going once a year to see the farmers, we're actually going at least three times a year to meet with our farmers. Now this means it's a lot of work, because it's not just one trip you go to the origin countries, you have to take a few trips. And we typically recommend to take a trip before the harvest, the pre-harvest trip, where you actually work with them and talk about 
what is the kind of processing that you want. So maybe the year before they have done a fully washed coffee, but you might want to work with them to try out some honey process. Or they have done a yellow honey and you say like, can we try maybe a red honey or a black honey? Or even with some coffees, it might be worth experimenting to do a natural coffee. And so we've been doing this with some of our farms in Costa Rica that we work with to really work with and try out different pieces what you can do in your country to change the profile of the coffees that they are producing. The second trip you will actually typically want to take during the harvest. If you can't take multiple trips, this is the most important trip for you. Go down there during the harvest and like just visit them for a few days and really make sure that everything is done the way you want it and that they also feel that you're really engaged in the process that they're doing. And then typically what we look for is also do a third trip in the year. It's the post-harvest trip before the coffee gets shipped so that you actually again can work with the farmers, make sure the coffee has the right humidity, the coffee has the right resting period, is processed the right way after it's dried, so that you get the coffee that you're actually expecting. So that's just a couple of things that, that we think is making it a step-by-step -step process to really get into a direct trade relationship with the farmers. And at the end, what really counts, it needs to be a win-win. It can't be a win just for the roaster, it can't be a win just for the coffee shop or the end customer, it also needs to be a win for the farmer. Because if he's not winning out of this relationship, he's wasting a lot of time and effort for um, not really being able to sustain his business in the long term. Now, what are some of the further opportunities that you're getting by a dry trade relationship? What can you do with that? Over, not just basically getting the coffee that you really want or getting that specific micro lot, but there's a couple of other things that you can develop over the years. So we talked a little bit about trying out different processing methods. So one thing that you can do is work with the farmer throughout the year and basically have him do different things with his plants. Maybe if he's been using certain pesticides before, try to work with him. Maybe he wants to shift to different methods of moving to more an organic production. It means a lot more labor for him. You might have to, or you will have to pay a much higher price for the coffee, but you might get a very different product that is much more sustainable for the environment. Other things is different processing methods as he's drying. You can do a double wash coffee. You can do, as we talked about before, natural processed coffee or some of these things that give you the opportunity to really change the profile of the coffee that you were actually buying. Now with this direct trade relationship, you also typically have the opportunity to actually pick some very specific parts of the farm. When you work with the farmer, you can pick actually a very specific picking day that you, or a very specific area of the farm and really work with the farmer that you get specifically this micro micro lot and really take this into your coffee shop because it will have a different profile than if everything is mixed together from a single farm. You will only have the ability to do this if you really buy in a direct trade relationship. And then we talked about all these special milling processes. So we talked about red honey, black honey, natural processed, the different drying methods on raised beds or on uh, the big patios. All these different methods is something that you can work with your farmer and gives you the opportunity to influence the flavor profile of the coffee that at the end you're serving in the cup to your end customer. Now, we talked a lot about the opportunities for the farmers, for the producers, for the coffee shops, for the roasters, but we also want to talk a little bit about what's the social impact and some of the risks that comes with all of that. Because everything has a good side and a bad side. And when we talk about direct rate relationships, there's also some challenges and some risks involved with that. And when we talk about challenges specifically, is when we look at the coffee growing countries, coffee producing is not just a single producer somewhere in a, in a part of the country that is living and is wanna make a living out of it. But a direct rate relationship has a very specific impact on a very specific farm. It might cut out the entire community he's living in. And so there's the danger that the producers and the farmers actually invest everything in their only little farm rather in the broader community. So it might be that he's doing really well, but the farmers around him, the community around him that he actually needs to sustain his farm in the long term is really becoming more and more impoverished because they won't get any of the benefits of the single trial trade relationship. So what we feel is it is very important if you as a roaster, as you as a coffee uh, shop, when you maintain a direct trade relationship, you also work with the producing uh, farmers 
that they also do something for the community. Because if it's just this one single person or this one single family um, taking the benefit of the direct trade relationship, it's going to be very, very bad for the community and it's going to be very bad for the relationship within the community. Now the, the, the other element what we see is um, when I talk a little bit about risk, direct trade relationship is not an organization that is certifying, there is no certification for direct trade. So it opens almost the door for what I would call cheating or overusing the term or misusing the term. So we just encourage everyone who is maintaining a direct trade relationship to really be very transparent, let your customers know what this direct trade relationship means, how you work with your farmers. But also as a customer, we encourage customers to really ask if someone says he's doing direct trade, let him explain what he's doing. How many times he goes to see the farmers every year? Is he going at all to the country? Because direct trade means you have to be meeting with the farmers. So that's kind of the things that you as an end consumer can do if you want to get a little bit more transparency in this entire process. There is no organization, there is no certification that guarantees you direct trade. So that's kind of like the little risk that you have in this entire concept of direct trade. But overall, what we have seen, it is, it is a very motivational relationship with the farmers. We get very good feedback. We give them feedback. Our customers love it. Our farmers love it. And we just can encourage everyone to start building a direct trade relationship because that's really making the difference in your cup of coffee. Okay. So with that, I want to say thank you for listening to us today. And if you have any questions, feel free.